Hi, it's Maddie. And V, and today we're going to be giving you some YA book recommendations based on the track list of V by BTS. The first song we have to talk about is Dynamite, which is BTS's track to comfort those during the pandemic, give them a little bit of brightness and joy in these troubling times. And I think a book that delivers on that is Noteworthy by Riley Redgate. This is the story of Jordan, who's an alto, and because of this, she's constantly rejected from her school's musical theatre program. But even though she can't change her voice, she's not going to stop her dreams. No Noteworthy is a story of subverting expectations and going after what you truly want. Jordan turns her back on the musical theatre side of things, who have shunned her consistently, and decides to forge her own path. Pave her own way, if you will. <laughs> So she joins an a cappella group of all boys who need an alto tone to round out their symphony. It's a novel about finding the people who truly love and appreciate you. It's about not letting people tell you what you're capable of and going after your dreams even when other people tell you that you'll never make it. This book also has a great sense of humour with the characters pulling off pranks and it also has a queer romance which makes it another one of my favourites. The book is also an exploration of gender norms and what it means to be a boy and girl in society and it's all about Jordan finding her place within that. It's a book with a lot of layers but I think you'll come out of it feeling exactly how the song Dynamite makes you feel. Happy, empowered and cared for. It really is a perfect read. The Life Goes On we've chosen We Are Okay by Nina McCall. This is all about Marin whose grandfather has died and so she's decided to stay in her university accommodation over winter break to avoid going back home where all of that grief lies. Mabel, her best friend and past love interest, isn't having this at all and goes to find her and convince her to come back and live with her family. The girls have to confront their relationship and Marin's grief and have things revealed that they've been suppressing for a while. I think this is the perfect fit for Life Goes On because although it sounds like quite a sad and emotional story, there is a happy ending for both of these characters. But this is the perfect book to say that you do have the strength to keep going even if you don't realise it. I think Yoongi's verse in this really fits the relationship between Marin and Mabel about how even though the atmosphere around them has changed, the girls themselves haven't and that they'll still be there for each other no matter what. So even though it might not feel like there's a way out of grief, with human connection, things can get better. I think how stagnant Marin's emotional state as well as her isolation in a physical state really speaks to the vibe of this song of feeling stuck. But even the title We Are Okay kind of has the same vibe as life goes on. Next song is Fly To My Room which is a subunit between Taeyang, Jimin, Yoongi and Hobi. This song is about feeling trapped in a space where your dreams are pushing against the walls. It has an initial sense of claustrophobia, but an ultimate sense of being able to make that space special to you once again. It's admitting that this space is restrictive, but also allowing it to be somewhere where your imagination can thrive. The book I've chosen for this is Looking for Alaska by John Green. Now, I speak more for the TV show adaptation than the book itself. I would personally recommend watching the TV show instead, but we're still going to talk about the story as a whole. This follows Miles, a boy from Florida, who moves across the country to go to a boarding school where he meets an interesting group of characters who become his close-knit group of friends. It's also about Miles' fascination with a girl called Alaska who's very mysterious, she's intriguing, she's different to anyone he's met before and it's safe to say he falls in love with her. I think this book fits Fly to My Room so well because they are contained in this campus space but it becomes their whole world. In a way Culver Creek is a microcosm of the world outside even though they have dreams of getting out of there. Alaska, more than anyone, wants to leave this place and start her life somewhere else. For her, life begins when she leaves this place. But for Miles, life starts anew. Culver Creek becomes a place of possibilities, of friendship, of daring and new experiences. And even though their hijinks and their lofty dreams of the crazy pranks they can pull are tampered down by the school authorities, they don't let that stop them from having fun. It's an incredibly deep story though, with an undercurrent of melancholy that fits the first half of the B album, particularly Fly to My Room, with its longing for escape and new life. The book takes quite a sorrowful turn halfway through, and I think that mix of tones also really lends itself to Fly to My Room, which on the surface is kind of sweet and fun, but then when you look more deeply into the lyrics, it's a tragic tale, but it is about looking on the positive side and interpreting situations in new ways. As I said, the TV show is phenomenal and you're going to want to watch it all in one sitting, so carve out a whole day, just enjoy being in your room and watching a truly fascinating show and its touching moments and heartbreaking moments, but perfectly balanced with just a brightness and a sunshine radiance.
which we all know is what Hobie brings to the track. <laughs> For the track Blue and Grey, we've chosen Solitaire by Alice Oseman. This is all about Tori, who's pessimistic and depressed. She just has a very negative outlook throughout the entire book. At her school, there's something called Solitaire, an anonymous online platform, and she's trying to figure out who is at the centre of it. She meets this boy called Michael Holden, who tries to help her, cheer her up, change her mindset about things, because he's got such an infectious optimism. And the book charts the difficulties of their relationship and different mindsets. I think both this book and the track have a very winter to revive. It's lethargic in a really self-aware way and you know that Tori doesn't want to always be like this just as at the end of the song there's the hope that they want to be happier. There's a line in the first verse sung by Jungkook where he says I guess everyone is happy. That's a mindset that Tori definitely shares where she thinks that everything that's bad is happening is just to her and it's quite detrimental to her relationship with the other characters because she always centers herself as the most sad and the most hurt. There's growth in this story as Tori comes to accept that that's how she feels, confronting her anxiety and and depression and ultimately coming to a better mental state with the help of other people around her. Next song is Telepathy and we've definitely moved to the brighter half of the album. It's an explosion of fun and my favourite track on the whole album. And the book I have to recommend is The Opposite of Always by Justin A. Reynolds. This is the story of Jack who meets Kate at a party and they quickly fall in love and she becomes a very important person in his life. But then things go wrong and the situation escalates and he finds himself being able to travel back in time to the night that they met and he he keeps trying to redo it to see if he can change the outcome. In every timeline you see the effects of the different choices he makes, not only on himself but the people around him, and it's only through the end that you get the whole picture of how things could have happened. Telepathy is a song about no matter what the circumstances, you get to be with that person who to borrow from twice makes you feel special. The point of telepathy is to let go of your worries and to just enjoy the time that you have together and that is what Jack is always trying to do, that's his main aim whenever he goes to see Kate in every single timeline. The meaning that she has to him is something he can only reflect on when it's taken away from him. In our isolation during the pandemic I think we've all come to think of the people who mean the most to us and I don't think we'll ever take for granted the time that we get to spend with our loved ones and that's why this book is so perfect for that because it's about enjoying the time but also knowing that you think about that person even when you're not together. It acknowledges distance as an inevitable thing but it doesn't stop the hope for the fact that they can be together one day. It's a really uplifting story and you can't help but root for the main character so much. It has a lightness and a sense of humour that makes it a really fun read even though it's truly sentimental and heart-wrenching too. Next is my favourite track on the album and that's To See Years, produced by J-Hope who's my favourite member. The book we've decided to go along with this song is Me and Elle and the Dying Girl by Jessie Andrews. Now this might be quite a literal translation of disease seeing as Rachel is suffering with leukemia and it's all up to Greg and his best friend Earl to reach out for hands of friendship and make her feel valued. Whilst on the surface that seems like a really nice thing to do, Greg is pushed into it by his parents. It's not actually something <laughs> that he feels is necessary. But I really love the friendship and relationship that's built between all of these characters and how Rachel is able to enlighten Greg on some of his attitudes that are quite toxic to his lifestyle. I think Hobie's first verse is all about being discontent with what you're managing to achieve because you always want more but still feeling like you're going through the motions and that very much fits Greg's attitude because he's always been someone that's just floated through life, tried to remain as under the radar as possible and Rachel is the one that really gives him drive to pursue the things that he's only been doing casually which is filmmaking. One of the main goals of the book is to create a film for Rachel and he puts a lot of pressure on this endeavour because it's meant to be the most perfect thing for her to consume and that pressure becomes quite claustrophobic for Greg which is a theme that's come up repetitively in BTS, particularly in Black Swan. There's a real sense of humour in this book, I think it doesn't take itself too seriously, there's a super fun format, it occasionally goes to a screenplay style, Jesse Andrews manages to make it quite an enjoyable read. You'd get super invested in the characters even though you know what's going to happen to them, in books like this the ending is always inevitable, but all of these characters just do the best they can in the moment and I think that's ultimately what the song is about. Not letting that disease, whether it be metaphorical or literal, define you. For the track Stay, our recommendation is Every Day by David Levithan. This is the story of A, who's a very unique character where every day they experience life in a different body. The catalyst for the story is one day A wakes up in Justin's body and Rhiannon is Justin's girlfriend and they have this marvellous day together where Justin, through A, is able to act in a way that 
that he never has before, which really endears Rhiannon to him. A falls in love with Rhiannon and then spends the rest of the book constantly trying to find people near her so that they can stay around her. I think the message of the song is quite clear about having someone who just wants to be by you, and so this was quite an easy pick because I've never read about someone so determined to be there for the person that they love as much as A is. Even with the complications of Rhiannon not really understanding what A's existence is and them being vilified on the internet as a demon, their relationship just proves that love can transcend any kind of body. It's such a fascinating read to see so many characters and identities explored through A being able to transform. So literally no matter where A is or who they are, they always find a way to stay close to Rhiannon, which makes it one of the sweetest and most genuine romances I've read. So those are our recommendations for BTS's album B. Thank you everyone so much for watching. If you've listened to the album make sure to let us know your favourite track and any books that you think match the songs. And we're going to be doing more BTS themed book recommendations in the future so look out for those. We'll see you next time. Silently, hey.